Hello and welcome back to my channel. You may have noticed I didn't do an April favorites video. It's because when you're at home 100% of the time, it's kind of hard to do a favorites video. So this is my May and April favorites video. Maple favorites. I'm parked back here because I know Roger's right at the front of his terrarium and I'm kind of hoping he'll climb the door or something. I can't promise you that you'll see him, but I know he's right at the front. So maybe if you look over my shoulder here for a little bit, you'll see him. So how is everyone's quarantine going? Has everyone stayed home going? Please know that just because in Ontario right now they've, list, they've lifted some restrictions, that does not mean you can go out and be crazy, okay? You're still supposed to stay home. And honestly, I've just gotten used to it at this point. Like, I don't mind it anymore. Sometimes I do just do my makeup for no reason because I'm just hanging out here. Sometimes I, I don't know, like, I don't hate it anymore. We're just hanging out. I hang out with Roger and my cat Lena all day. So that's just how it is. I've been watching a lot of things on Netflix. We're going to talk about, actually, none of them are on Netflix. I've been watching a lot of things on Disney+. Plus. So we're going to talk about some of those things in this video. But things that I'm not going to really talk about more is I watched all three che Cheetah Girls movies all three High School Musical movies, and I had never seen any of the Descendants movies, so I watched all three of those, and they're not that bad. They're not what I was expecting, and I didn't think the music was as catchy as I was hoping it was going to be. Like, I don't know that I would listen to any of those songs out of context, uh, but it, they were still cute movies, and I still enjoy them. You know, hashtag no regrets. And yeah, so I have a couple things here in front of me right now that I want to talk to you that I have absolutely loved over the past little while. So first and foremost, I want to talk again about the Mario Badescu buffering lotion. So something happened and I don't know, I don't know what, but sort of towards the more beginning of quarantine, like more of the, towards the beginning of April, my skin just decided to absolutely lose its mind. Like I was getting like big acne everywhere and that was a bit around the time actually that I put the Sephora sale through that's why so much of my Sephora sale uh haul if you will ended up being skincare because my skin was awful and I used the buffering lotion every day on some of those big zits to try to help dry them out and help bring them forward that video is still one of my more popular videos in the sense that on your YouTube creator page it shows you like the past three days like the videos of yours that have the most views and this one is always on that list and uh, that just kind of goes to show to me that not a whole lot of other people are reviewing skincare which honestly I don't blame them because skin is so different for everyone I just don't care so I'll just tell you what my experience was and I just think it's a great product and it works really well for me on some of my more surface level zits um, and drying them out and that sort of thing. So I really like this product. And then a product that I don't really want you to consider one of my favorites, but I thought I would mention is this Tarte, what's it called? The Tarte Knockout Tingling Treatment Toner. If you watched my random vlog last week where I used that, I just want you to know that, that like it really does burn my skin. Like, when I wear that tar toner, it hurts. And it, it doesn't smell good. And it makes me feel like I have been sweaty. Like, if I even just get out of the shower and I use that toner, like, the way it makes my skin hot and the way it smells, like, I just feel like I need to shower again. But I would like to believe that the tingliness and the, you know, all of that is helping something get through my skin. And it's helping something turn over. And it's, I'd like to think that it's doing something. I've only been using it for about a week now, so I, I haven't seen any results. I will keep you posted on if it does anything, even though I did hear that Tarte is, uh discontinuing it. I, I messaged them on Instagram and I asked them if it was true, but they never, never got back to me. Um, but I just wanted you to know that I am using that and it does suck. And if it's worth it in the end, then it's worth it in the end. But if it's not worth it in the end, you know, well, the sort of last skincare thing that I wanted to mention to you, I, I, I mentioned a lot. I've mentioned it in a lot of favorite videos in the past, but it was just worth mentioning again because this is still an edge lip sleeping mask. And it just occurred to me that I've had it for over a year now. And I'm still only about not even halfway through it. It's just such a good product. It lasts forever. I take back all the things I said before about how I wasn't going to spend $30 on it because it seems silly. $30, but it's going to last me forever. Forever. Way longer than the Bite lip masks do. And I just really do like it. And I feel like I used to wake up with dry, gross lips every morning. And ever since I used this, I have not. I have mine apparently in the grapefruit flavor. I didn't know that. Uh, but... I don't even notice the flavor. It's just, 
I just like it. The only makeup item that I brought over here to show you is actually this Ciate London uh, Glow 2 Highlighter in Starburst because I just only wear this highlighter now. I actually forgot like until I went to do my makeup for this video, which I ended up using this for anyway, but I was like, you know what? There are other highlighters. And it's not like I'm doing my makeup a lot lately. I really only like, if I'm doing semi sort of good makeup and not just blotting things on my face, it's usually for a video. So you've probably seen all of my makeup looks that I've done in the past two months, if you watch my channel. But this is just such a nice highlighter. It's just such a nice like, light gold with a little bit of sheen. It's just so nice for my skin. It's so great. I just love this highlighter. It's expensive, yes, but I think the packaging is cute. I think Ciate is cute. I think this highlighter is cute, and I just like it. Something I bought a while ago, back when I could go to Winners. Uh, I will never take my morning trips to Winners for granted ever again. But I bought this pack of five silk scrunchies, and it said on the package that it wouldn't leave dents in your hair. And my hair dents so freaking easy. If, if I even put my hair in a ponytail for 45 seconds, it has dents in it. So I, I, I didn't believe it, so I bought them. And um, I gave one to my sister, I believe. And lately, because my hair is so long and so heavy, and I don't have to have it looking nice because I'm not going anywhere, I just put it in two braids all the time. I sleep with it in two braids. I just hang out with it in two braids. But like, for some reason, I always feel like I have to be ready to have to make my hair look nice if I if I need to. So I started using these rather than elastics because elastics were really like crimping the bottom. And these silk scrunchies really don't leave bumps in my hair. I've tried those, you know, like the coily elastics that you see all over Instagram and stuff. I've tried those, I just don't feel like they hold in my hair as well as other more, you know, like scrunchies or elastics. I just feel like the, the coily ones have fallen out of my hair way too easy. But these, they really hang on when I braid my hair in two. And they really keep them in place, you know, all night, all day. Sometimes for multiple days and nights if I don't want to take my hair out. And it, it it's really helpful to have something that holds my hair in the braids but then won't leave that weird kink at the bottom. Because for some reason, I live in fear of having to look nice at some point. Let me just tell you, having really long thick hair sucks for sleeping because it just gets everywhere, it gets all knotted, it gets in my face, it gets all over. The goal is I really want to grow my hair like really long so that I can like braid it and then tie the braids in little nooses like in the new animated Adams Family movie. I'm sure using that word just got my video demonetized, but that's the goal. Uh, after I've done that one, sure, we can cut it off then, but not until then. I just want to say I've done it. And now that I've blabbed about makeup and hair, I'm still looking for a really good leave-in conditioner for my hair. If you have one, uh, let me know. I like the spray in Briogeo one, but I don't love it. And I don't like the oil, like the drops oil as much, uh, to be honest with you. I tried it in that vlog that if you saw that last week, I've tried it a couple of times since then and I just, I'm not, I'm not enamored with it. So I would like to try more. So if you have a favorite leave-in conditioner for your hair, if your hair is really dry, uh, let me know because I would love to try that. But other than hair and makeup, uh, some of my favorite things would include these that you can hardly see behind me, but I will insert footage of my little garden boxes, if you will. I drew the measurements like the mathematician that I am. I used a ruler and, and measured and I asked my stepdad to make them because I can't do things. And so he made me those boxes there to kind of help keep all my plants contained in one spot. I don't have to worry about being gangly and knocking them over. And it just, it's nice to keep them in those cute little boxes up there to themselves. And I like that. And then speaking of plants, I wanted to make note of my rattlesnake calathea. It's a little bit heavy because I did just water it the other day, but I think rattlesnake calatheas are so beautiful. I don't think I have enough light in my room for them, and that's why some of them are not kind of growing the way they're supposed to, because the bottoms are supposed to be really purple, and then the tops are supposed to be this green, beautiful, uh, vibrant pattern. So some of them don't have the purple bottom the way they're supposed to. I think that's because of the light in my room. But one of my favorite things about the calathea is it opens really wide during the day and then closer at night it closes. So that's how you can tell it's like 9 p.m. right now is because it's all pretty up. But if I, if I had shot this video like say 10 hours ago it would be bushier because they're all out. So it really does do this like prayer plant thing all day where it comes out and then up and then out and then up. I do my best to try to rotate the plant all the time because as you can see like I've got new shoots coming up over here. They kind of grow up in this like tubey and then unwind. So I'm trying my best to like rotate it. 
so that different sides can get the sun, but I'm really, like, not doing a good job at remembering to turn it. I'm doing a great job at remembering to check if the soil needs to be watered, but I'm not doing a good job at turning it. I forgot to grab one of the other things that I want to mention as my favorites, but I will just explain it to you. I really can't wear them with a wig on anyway, because the wig makes my head too wide. But I have a pair of blue light glasses that are like really like extreme, like the lenses are bright yellow. You can get sort of ones that have less yellow lenses to look a little more normal, but I'm just a go big or go home kind of person. And I had a pair and I, let them at work. I use them for work all the time because I, I don't really need to see color on a computer screen um, when I'm just checking emails and stuff. And the purpose of blue light glasses is to protect your eyes from the blue light of a computer, that sort of thing, that can harm your eyes over time. And if you're like me and you spend like practically 100% of your life on a computer or on your phone or something, you know, I'm worried about my eyes in the future. So that's why I wear these glasses and that's why I let them at work. Fast forward to the beginning of a global pandemic and my glasses are still at work and I have no way to go back and get them so I just ordered a new pair of glasses and I have them here and I wear them all day while I'm working and then I take them off uh, when my work day is over and then I'm editing YouTube videos or, or something because then the color actually does matter to me and I just love having them like I feel like before I had them back my eyes were strained and in pain all the time and I didn't even notice that I had headaches but now that I have my protective glasses I feel like I feel better, you know? I didn't even notice I didn't feel good, but I noticed that I feel better. So if you're like me and you're spending a lot of time at home on your computer, please think about investing in some glasses to help protect your eyes from the screen. I know it might seem silly, but I promise you, future you will thank you for it. And then if I can tell you one really good customer service story as well. So Roger, my crusty gecko behind me, he has a light on the top of his cage. Right now it is nighttime so the light is not on and he is nocturnal that's why he's up but during the day he has a zoomed nano light fixture that has one of their nano basking bulbs in it so the purpose of the nano basking bulb is a i want to help make it lighter in there during the day so that he knows that it's daytime and also b it raises the temperature a little bit it doesn't raise the temperature a lot because crescent geckos don't need hot temperatures but it raises it to probably 78 ish degrees is what my little thermometer in there says whereas normally it just sits around 70 but the issue with the nano bulbs is that they burn out so fast and I had a run there where I had nano bulbs and they were going out like so fast so I started the pandemic if you will with three backup bulbs and within a week I went through all three of them because I put them in they'd be fine and then they would burn out and I had already had a thread an email thread, if you will, with ZoomEd, because I had emailed them before about how I put the light bulb in and it stopped working a day later. They told me I was screwing it in too tight, so I, I assumed that it was my fault, but then I contacted them again and I was like, listen, like, I really feel like there's a problem with these light bulbs. They assured me there wasn't. I was like, listen, I shouldn't have to go through three in a week. I think they felt bad for me. I felt bad for me too, to be honest, because she was like, can you like send us pr proof of purchase, like a picture of the receipt or something. I didn't have a receipt because I bought them in February, uh, at PetSmart and like who keeps their receipts, you know? Um, so I didn't have a receipt, but ZooMed anyway sent me two replacement basking bulbs and two halogen bulbs, which are a different kind of bulb, but they'll work in the fixture as well. So I just thought it was worth telling you the story that ZooMed, which is a really big reptile company, understood my frustration at losing three of their bulbs in a week. So they gave me two new bulbs and then two other bulbs to try. Uh, so eventually when this bulb, goes out, I will try the halogen bulb instead just to see how it goes, but I will have to keep a close eye on it because she did tell me that the halogen bulbs get hotter than the basking bulbs, and I don't want to fry poor little Roger. So that's my ZooMed story, that's great, and it makes me happy that most of my reptile stuff is ZooMed because they were so great when I came to them with just a simple, it was less so that I came to them with the frustration that it was that the bulbs were always breaking and more so that I came to them with, listen, is there a problem with these bulbs or is it me? <laughs> because I, the first time I was genuinely like, maybe I just don't know how to screw in a light bulb. But I think maybe it might be the bulbs. They might just be really sensitive and maybe they're being knocked or something. I'm not sure, but they sent me back backup bulbs and you know, that story is resolved. What else did I want to talk to you about? Um, my YouTube channel that I've been really into lately, this is gonna sound so weird, but it's a, his, his channel is called Aquaramax, and his name is Russ, and he seems like a very nice guy, and his channel is all about bugs. 
And as you know, I'm working on overcoming my fear of bugs. That's part of the reason why I have a collection of isopods that I just keep. Um, and I just, I find his channel because he likes them so much, but not in like a weird way. Like he's so chill about it and he's so casual and he's like such an approachable guy that I really like his channel. And I just, like I watch his live streams. He does like weekly live streams where he just answers anybody's questions about any kind of bug pretty much. And they write in the chat and he just seems like such a cool guy. So if for some reason, I don't know, you find yourself in the market looking for a bug YouTube channel to watch, Russ, his channel is Aquarimax. Seems like a pretty good, cool guy. What else did I have on my list here to talk about? Oh, I want to talk to you about Dr. K and Dr. Pole because I only watch two things these days and that's either Clone Wars or Vet Shows. So I was gonna do a whole mini rant in here about how much I like Star Wars all of a sudden, but instead I uploaded like a really out of the blue video last week talking about my Star Wars thoughts because up until May the 4th, I hadn't really, I didn't really know much about the Star Wars. I didn't really understand, you know, but now I understand and now I get it and now I feel like I understand all these references in the world and I feel like I can talk to my friends for the first time ever and I just love that I understand these now and I really enjoyed them, like I didn't just enjoy them because everyone around me likes them, like I really did genuinely enjoy the Star Warses. I still think Rogue One is my favorite movie overall just because it's a really good one shot story if you will like from beginning to end i find all the characters likable i like the story i really enjoy rogue one as a standalone movie and i'm almost finished season one as of today so by the time this video is up i will definitely be on season two of clone wars and i'm really enjoying that show and i'm really enjoying star wars but other than star wars all i do is watch that shows so i mentioned before i was watching dr k's exotic animal hospital and they had uploaded the m more recent season, I think, most recent season, I don't know, uh, to Disney Plus at the the middle-ish of March. So I watched all of that, and now all of a sudden I can't even find that show on Disney Plus anymore. I think it's, I don't know, like National Geographic just that doesn't magically not have the rights to their own show anymore. So I don't know what happened there, but if you can find it somewhere, you know, Dr. K's Exotic Animal, that is a great show. And I like that she only deals with exotic animals, so... You know, you see really cool animals on that show all the time. And she's in Florida, so that's like where all the weird animals are. But now that that's over for me, I switched to The Incredible Dr. Pole. And the coolest thing to me about Dr. Pole is this is a 70-year-old man. At least in the first couple seasons, he's 70 years old. And he's like <laughs> pulling baby cows out of cows and helping horses give birth. And it's a, definitely a more graphic show, like you're going to see a whole lot more on Dr. Pole than you're going to see on Dr. K, because he does farm animals and stuff too, and it's just, but it's so cool, and you know, a farm is not something that is ever in my future, you know, they're not the most accessible place, but I can see how cool it is, and I can appreciate what he's doing for these farmers and the work that these farmers do, and I just think it's so interesting. I'm not saying I think Dr. Pole is the most thorough vet ever. Um, sometimes he just diagnoses things and he doesn't run any tests and I think that that's weird. And also sometimes I think it's weird that, you know, he doesn't wear a mask or a cap. Animals that he's doing surgery on are never on like ventilators or anything to like monitor their vitals and I just think it's weird, especially coming from Dr. K who has all of that stuff on all the time. She's always running every test. Like it definitely seems weird to me, but it's definitely an entertaining and interesting show. And I mean, he seems like a good vet. Um, he clearly, you know, they say that he's served like most of Michigan at that point. So I just think it's an interesting show and I really appreciate it. I like it less when they go into the more personal stuff and they do like family outings and that sort of thing. Like I'm just here for the sick animals. I want to know what's wrong with them. I want to know how you help them. Like <laughs> I don't care about your life as much, buddy, but it's still a great show and I still like it. And if you're looking for an, like a good vet show, and you're having the same issue as me that Dr. K is magically gone. Dr. Pole is a great show as well. And there's like 14 seasons of it. So I'm only halfway through and I watch it every day. Because each episode is 40 minutes. So, I don't know. That's a good one. And believe it or not, that brings me to the end of my Maple <laughs> Favorites video. What did you love in the months of May and April? What did you do? Like, what kind of media did you consume? What did you binge watch? What did you play? You know, I'm still just playing Animal Crossing. What did you play? What did you do? What have you been like? What skills have you been acquiring? I recently purchased a pack of 100 pencil crayons and I've been trying to draw my plants. You know, not every day, every couple of days maybe, every sometimes, because I'm not a good artist, but I would like to get better at it. 
And so we're doing that. I'm obviously, I'm still working because I work in media, so that doesn't stop. So, you know, I'm doing all of these things. So what are you doing? What have you been up to? You know, how are you dealing with all of this? What are you doing to help keep yourself centered and all of that fun stuff? Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. I have uh, had an influx lately of subscribers, so thank you so much if you're a new viewer for joining this little party that we have over here. And if you are an older subscriber, you know that I love you and you know that I love you hanging out. So thank you so much for that as well. And I will see all of you in my next video. Bye. I just finished shooting the favorites video and look, he just sat there the whole time just behind the black bar. He just sat there. Like Roger, you were supposed to climb or something. I don't understand what you want from me. Eh? Oh. I don't understand.